Zach? Yes? Why are we here at the Gunrunners? Because I got a bunch of gold bars I got to spend on stuff. Well, I thought we were hoarding those. We agreed to never spend them. But, like, there's no reason to be miserly. We can spread the wealth around. We were, we were going to hold on to them as a memento of our various adventures. I will always hold our adventures near and dear to my heart. And these gold bars are heavy and they're starting to hurt my back. 9mm pistol, 9mm submachine gun, anti-material rifle, salt carbine. Yeah, that's, uh, that's your typical cowboy revolver. Now, a normal person, mm. someone that is not as well-trained in firearms as me, yes, would not be able to reload this as quickly as I can. Cha, cha, cha. Ah, yeah. Too bad there's no speed loader for it. So, this gun is based on the Colt Single Action Army. Mm-hmm. Firing at that wall is going to cause a ricochet. Someone's going to get hurt here. Oh, your thumb must get sore. Yeah, it does get really sore. Uh, reloading it that quickly is something that would take a lot of practice. It's a really old design. Been around for quite a long time. Colt is a very reliable name. Well, I mean, they were. But we're not going to get into that right now. <laughs> okay. They did actually make this a single action, which is interesting. Every time you fire it, you pull the hammer back. Because that's how this gun would actually work, you know? What would it be if it wasn't single action? It would be double action. You have to pull the hammer back every time you want to fire a bullet. Yep, that is true. Seems like that's also going to get tiring on your thumb. Eh, not really. It's not too heavy. For all the shooting we do, maybe. One of the fun things about these is that they don't have a disconnector on the hammer. Which basically means that if you just hold down the trigger and pull back the hammer and let go of it, it will just fire. So oh, that, yep. That means you can do like in the old cowboy movies where you can fan the hammer and just hold down the trigger and just go bow, 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 and fire like six rounds one after another. Why don't you do that? Um, I haven't practiced doing that and I don't want the recoil to jam the hammer into the back of my left hand. It would hurt the palm of your hand, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's already so damaged from Mario Party. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't even thought about that. Oh my God. Remember how they used to sell the gloves for Mario Party so that you could do the thing where you had to spin the analog stick around? I am aware. Oh, man. Yes, let's discuss the Nintendo 64 shitty controllers. Yes, indeed. Hey, you know how you had three arms for each prong? What you didn't? Oh, okay. You'd use the middle prong and the right prong, and then three years later, you'd find a game that would use the D-pad, so you'd use the left prong, but the D-pad had gotten all crusty from disuse. Yeah, <laughs> man, that, God, that would happen a lot. Why did they fall out of disuse? It's because it's not double action. That's part of it, and also just because of how long it took to reload this. I can see how that would be an issue. Yeah, it does take a while to reload it. And it's, I mean, you know, it's a design that's from the early 1800s. It's, it's not going to last forever. New guns came out. It, it might be slower than a semi-auto rifle, but hey, it's still faster than a blunderbuss. Up until this was created, repeating guns were a thing, but not really. This was like the first viable repeating firearm. Ah, so just like the Nintendo 64, it was good for its time, but technology has surpassed it. There are still people that will tell you about how great a single action revolver is, and to be fair, they're still very good guns. Yeah, the same people that like Bomberman 64. Yeah. The multiplayer was fun. Next gun. The 44 Magnum Revolver. I believe it's based on a Smith & Wesson Model 19. You can't fool me. That's the exact same gun. No, it's different. See, this one's double action. You don't have to pull the hammer back on it every time, but you can. I guess, if you wanted to make your thumb sore. Uh... <laughs> Oh, how, holding the gun sideways. It's going to be styling. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning around cover to shoot. <laughs> Advanced. <laughs> yeah. Eject the rounds out of it and put new rounds in. Hooray. It's going to be speed, speed loaded, sped load. How's that for futuristic? Um, it was invented by a guy that was known for designing just weird wildcat cartridges. He basically just kept taking like 44-40 Smith & Wesson. 45 Colt, and he just kept taking those and just trying to pack more powder into it and making them more powerful. He kept pestering Smith & Wesson and saying, I'm making these cartridges that are really powerful. Can you guys, like, make me a frame that can actually handle this? <laughs> he yeah. just kept pestering Smith & Wesson over and over and over until eventually Smith & Wesson was like, fine, if we'll get you to shut up. Here, it's a K-frame revolver. Have fun, buddy. There you go. So, my bullets are too strong. Your gun is too weak. 
I need more power! I don't want to use your BABY GUN! 44 Magnum was just created by a guy that wouldn't stop pestering Smith & Wesson until they made him a gun in the caliber he wanted. Hooray, now I can go squirrel shooting! For the longest time, 44 Magnum was the most powerful Magnum cartridge that you could buy. Because 50 Cal hadn't been designed yet. Well, not in revolvers anyway. <laughs> no, that would come later, the 50 Cal revolvers. Yeah, that would come later. The ones that break your arm? They don't break your arm, but they're definitely not pleasant to shoot. We've moved from a single action revolver to a single and double action revolver. So this one you can either fire it by just pulling the trigger and then the hammer moves backwards and then forwards, or you can fire it by pulling the hammer back and then firing it. Mm -hmm. I can't do that on this one for reasons that I refuse to explain to you. <laughs> yes, certainly not technological limitations of the game. Yeah, certainly not that. I just don't feel like doing it. Behold the 10 millimeter pistol. Yeah, I think everybody is familiar with that weapon. Everybody, anyone that has played this game for five minutes is aware of what the 10 millimeter pistol is. Yes, it's given to you by the good doctor, which you shouldn't do because you're not supposed to just give away guns. You're not supposed to do that. And also, he's a doctor. Ever heard of the Hippocratic Oath? Do no harm. Just gave a guy a gun. Lots of ways to save lives. Sometimes heal patients, sometimes kill bad guys. The 10 mil pistol is made of like a weird combination of several different guns. The slide is kind of based on the Desert Eagle. Look, it reminds me of a USP. A little bit. It's kind of got that to it. Just because of that flashlight underneath the barrel. Yeah, I think that's part of it, which this isn't a flashlight. It's like part of the gun. I don't fully understand it. So they just wanted a, a, a gun that's a little... Top heavy, I they guess. They wanted it to be chunky for some <laughs> reason. It's in 10 millimeter. The, the calibers in this game are a little weird. They don't like fully make sense. And also the shell casings that come out of this gun are absolutely gigantic. I mean, it looks like a grenade shell casing is coming out of there when I shoot it. Look how big that thing is. That's true. It's like the size of my dang finger. By the way, thank you for spraying me with all this brass. You're welcome. 10 millimeter is not a common caliber. In real life it is. It's decently common in real life. Is it? I, yeah. I feel like I hear a lot about 9mm, but not a lot about 10mm. It's not as common as 9mm, but it's still common. There's a lot of guns that are chambered in 10mm. Yeah? Anything popularized by modern culture? I mean, there's Glocks that are in 10mm. The, the Bren 10 is a 10mm handgun. Um, Smith & Wesson has made several guns in 10mm. There's, there's quite a few guns that are in 10mm. It's very popular as a hunting or defense cartridge against bears. I, I know it's bigger than 9 mil, but that doesn't mean it's good against bears. No, it is. Is it? Yeah, 10 millimeter is actually a decent cartridge against bears. There's a lot of brush pilots in Alaska that carry a 10 mil. But not 9 mil because it's too weak? It's only a 1 millimeter difference. Yeah, but the cartridge itself is smaller. Well, you're not firing the cartridge. No, but the cartridge of 10 millimeter has a lot more powder behind it. Ah, so it has a lot more power behind yes, it. Yes, it has more power behind it, and that's why. Also, the bullet itself is substantially heavier. Even though it's only one millimeter bigger in diameter, the bullet itself is longer and heavier. They should probably mention the girth of the bullet instead of just the length. The actual cartridge is 9 by 19 millimeter. Mm. I'm trying to remember the exact nomenclature for 9 by 21, but 9 by 21 is a cartridge that's used almost exclusively in, like, Italy. Wouldn't that be better for shooting bears? Because it's longer and more powerful? Mm, not necessarily. It might be faster, but I don't know. You're getting into like stuff that I can't really remember off the top of my head, man. <laughs> the mathematics of bullets? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not fully versed in that. But 10 millimeter is actually a good cartridge. It's like a defensive cartridge against bears because of the power it has behind it. Okay. Uh, this is the 12 millimeter pistol. Wait, this is the 12.7 millimeter, so that's the 50 cal. Yeah, this is a 50 cal pistol. To be honest, I don't know why they didn't just put a Desert Eagle in this game. I don't entirely know what this pistol is supposed to be based off of. It's like, oh my god, that barrel is way too big for a 50 cal. That's like a <laughs> freaking 20 millimeter barrel. It almost looks like you're firing grenades from it. I feel like when you hold onto this gun, you're supposed to get a nice high grip on it. But you're holding it down to the very bottom of the handle. I'm holding it down to the bottom of the handle because I don't want to get bit by this weird looking slide that looks like it came off of a Formula One car. Yeah, fair enough. So, um, if I do get a high grip on it, that is definitely going to hit me in the hand. And I can tell you, that probably won't feel good. Hey, you've got gloves on. It'll be fine. I, hmm. 
Nine mil pistol. That's a much more normal looking handgun. This is a very normal looking handgun. Stop and repeating me. Indeed it is because it's based on the Browning high power. In fact, it's actually incredibly accurate for a Browning high power. It's yep. double action too. No, this one's single action. No, you don't have to keep on reloading the hammer. But it's still single action though. The bit, single action is just just refers to hammer movement. Uh huh. If a gun is double action, that means the hammer has to go backwards, which is the first action, and forwards, which is the second action. The hammer is doing that exact thing. It's going forwards and hitting the bullet, and then. But this hammer is only going forwards, and then the gun fires. Uh huh. But then. The end position is backwards. Just think about the steps the hammer has to go through in order for the gun to fire. Don't think about after that. Oh, okay. So for a double action gun to fire, the hammer has to go backwards, forwards. Well, this gun has to go backwards and forwards too, except the backwards motion is already prepped. What happens after the gun fires is not part of whether the gun is single or double action. Only, only until oh. the bullet leaves the gun. So only revolvers can be double action. No, oh my god. <laughs> oh, is that a, a problem for you? No, other handguns could be double action. But then you have to pull the hammer back. No, you don't. Pulling the trigger on the gun is pulling the hammer backwards and then it snaps forward. So to, to summarize, this is a single action. This is a single action handgun. Because you pull the trigger and it goes forward, backward, really fast. Because it just goes forward, and then the gun fires. Yes. And Don't then it goes, think about the part of it going backwards. It goes backwards really fast after it's Don't fired. Don't think about the thing of the hammer going backwards after the gun. The only reason the hammer goes backwards is because the slide comes backwards, ejects the shell casing, and cocks the hammer. How would a double-action pistol like this work? You pull the trigger, the hammer slowly moves backwards, and then once it reaches the break point, the hammer slaps forwards and fires the gun. So how do triple-action revolvers work? Those are not a thing. What if there's like a hammer that jiggles around a bit? Then your handgun probably needs to be serviced. <laughs> the only downside to the Browning High Power, or at least that I've noticed, is if you get a, a good like high grip on it, like you're kind of supposed to, sometimes when the hammer comes backwards, it does have a tendency to bite the webbing of your hand. I don't really like that. That's why you wear gloves. I see you have a small hole in the side of your gun. Is that a safety? The hole is what holds the firing pin in place. Once you get the firing pin and the spring installed in the slide of the handgun, you drive the roll pin through it, and that's what keeps the firing pin and spring inside the slide of the handgun. So if you remove that pin, the gun can't fire. So it is kind of a safety. Yeah, it's a safety in that the gun won't function anymore. <laughs> it's a safety much in the same way that if you remove the engine of your truck, your truck won't work anymore. I'm putting it in park by taking out the V6! 12.7mm <laughs> submachine gun. That's beefy. So this is the... Oh, why am I looking straight? <laughs> what is happening here? So this is a 127 millimeter submachine gun. It's somewhat based on the P90. So why and do you the, use this all the time? You love the P90 so much. I do love the P90, but I don't really care for this gun. Because it doesn't have the iconic look. Yeah, kind of. It does have the same top fed magazine as the P90. But beyond that, it, it's not really very similar. Hmm. I also find it strange that it's in 50 cal for some reason. I don't fully understand why it's in 50. I mean, it does have a lot of kinetic energy behind it. Also, this sight radius is incredibly short. Having a longer sight radius theoretically increases accuracy, but for some reason, the rear sight is attached to the front of the magazine, mm -hmm. and your front sight is right there, which only gives you like three inches of sight radius. Yeah, now that you bring that up, it seems silly. Also, why is it called a radius? It should be called a sight length, right? I, I've just always heard it referred to as sight radius. Radius is, refers to circles. Yeah. Doesn't make sense in this context. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why, Mike. I don't know why it is called that. I'm sure there is some reason for it that I don't understand. Or maybe, maybe there isn't a reason for it. And it's just everybody just keeps parroting that word. Okay. Just like stopping power. Okay. Well, if they find more guns like this, I hope they improve their sight radii. Yes. Maybe when they say sight radius, they mean the size of the sight's peeping hole. No, they're referring to how far between the front and rear sight. Maybe you are, because you're using that term incorrectly. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I'm dumb as hell. <laughs> I just have, like, this, all this autistic knowledge about guns, and then some of it I don't fully understand. So uh, I you, apologize. You came out here to buy all these guns and spew all this gun knowledge out towards me, and now I'm making you have self-doubts. 
Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Anyway, so this is partially based on the P90. Uh The magazine definitely looks like a P90 magazine, except that it's made of, like, opaque plastic, and you can't actually see how many rounds are in there. That's unfortunate. Yeah. But mostly based on the P90, I don't know what this little tab sticking out of the back is. Maybe that's supposed to be, like, a release mechanism for a stock, or maybe that's the safety, and the safety is literally an on-off switch. Oh, uh, it could, like a like a light switch. Yeah, maybe this thing is, has a battery operated safety, which would be real stupid, but it's possible. Battery operated safeties. Yeah. So the battery has to have juice, otherwise your gun can't fire. Yeah, basically. Have you seen many guns like that? No, there's not really a whole lot of them. Some people tried to make like biometric guns. Uh huh. The guns that couldn't fire unless the owner was the one holding the gun. Mm-hmm. But the problem with those is you generally have to have a battery in it in order for it to work, mm-hmm. which usually means that that's the weakest part of the gun. And therefore you can just make the gun fire by hot wiring you know, the battery area. By, yeah. Like hot wiring <laughs> it. Or in one instance, there was a gun that was a biometric gun. You had to have like a little tiny microchip in your hand mm-hmm. that would tell the gun that you were allowed to shoot it. But the way they got the gun to not work when the biometrics weren't present was by having a tiny solenoid block the trigger. Uh-huh. And then someone figured out that you can literally just hold a magnet to the solenoid and it will allow the gun <laughs> to fire. So, kind of defeated the whole point. Mm-hmm. If this was actually based on the P90, you see that weird kind of trapezoidal looking part right there? Uh, the part in between the trigger and hand holder? Yeah, I would assume that's where the shell cases would come out of if this was truly based on a P90. But since it's basically just the magazine that's based on the P90, it's kind of odd that the shell cases have come out of there. Also, I don't think that bolt would be able to move back far enough in order for the shell cases to come out. But now I'm just getting nitpicky. <laughs> also, if this was actually based on a P90, that magazine would be 50 rounds. I don't know why it's 21. Probably because the bullets are bigger. They had to make room for the part of the gun that shoots bullets out the wrong way. Yeah, that shoots the shell. They had to actually... Oh, you know what I just thought of? Hmm. That weird trapezoidal thing at the bottom? Yes. That's actually where the empty shells are stored. So when you fire the gun, the shell casings disappear, and this thing dispenses empty shell casings out the side of the gun. Is that a real fact? No, that's, <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> you had me going. <laughs> yeah, you have to replace the magazine with the actual ammunition, and then you have to replace the magazine that has the fake ammunition in it. This is the futuristic guns. They don't want you to leave brass lying around. Picking it up by hand is so tedious, so they collect it in the, in the area there. I mean, there are actually brass catchers that go on guns. That is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Are they often built into the gun? No, usually they're not. <laughs> we'll go to the anti-material rifle. Sure, why not? So it's based on the PGM Hecate, or Hectate, I can never remember how to pronounce it, which is a bolt-action, 50 caliber anti-material rifle. Ah, so um, it's not full auto, obviously. It's not, no, even, it's not it's, even semi-auto. Is no, that? it's it's bolt-action. Yeah, it's a French anti-material rifle, which, I don't know if you noticed, but we ain't in France. Right. That, that explains why it's so rare, though. I mean, I suppose it's possible that somehow one or two of them ended up in the wasteland, but it seems like everybody in the NCR has this thing. Yeah, does a lot of damage, very slow reload speed, you know. What sniper rifle do you think they would have instead? Uh, the Barrett 50 cal sniper rifle. They could have just made a bolt action 50 cal sniper rifle. I suspect the reason they chose this one is because it's a somewhat futuristic looking bolt action. It It does look very interesting. Mm -hmm. It does have a very commanding presence for a bolt action rifle in this game. And I suspect the reason it's in here is because of how it looks. It's got that long fuck you barrel on it. It's got a long barrel on it. It's got a big old freaking like tanker muzzle brake on the end of it. It it is a very commanding looking gun. I feel like the magazine is a little bit too short for a 50 cal, but we'll we'll gloss over that. I've always been a fan of bolt action rifles. Mm. Uh, we, we there are other types like the lever action and mm-hmm. uh, semi auto rifles, but I. Don't, I feel like the tactile feel of the bolt action, oh, it's so satisfying. If a bolt action is well made, it is incredibly satisfying to run the action on one of those. Mm-hmm. I will agree with you on that one. Bolt actions can be very satisfying to to use, but they're kind of outdated. It's not good for combat because it can't spit lead. Yeah, pretty much. The assault carbine. That's, this is the same thing that you got. Yeah, the M16A2. So the assault carbine in this game is not based on an M16A2. It's more likely based on a... The A4 because the uh, barrel is shorter? Kind of like the XM177 or the GAU 5A. 
what are the distinguishing features? Basically, it's a short-barreled M16A1, but this one is interesting because it does have the forward assist and a, and a brass deflector on it, but it has the little collapsible stock from the 177 or the GAL 5A. If we're, if we're going to oversimplify it, it's pretty much based on the M16, yes. It's an AR-15 receiver with a collapsible stock and a shorter barrel on it. Um, I don't really know why the game is like, oh, this is 5mm, instead of saying that it's 5.56, five, because that's what caliber it actually would be. Right. But the game says it's in 5mm. It's just for gameplay purposes. They made gameplay worse by not making it 5.56, five, because there's 5.56 five, five, ammo everywhere. Yeah, that's true. I'm not really sure why they made this one a different caliber. It would be in the exact same caliber as the service rifle. Battle rifle! It's an M1 Garand! Oh, not exactly a battle rifle. A well, battle worn rifle, perhaps? I, technically, the M1 Garand would be considered a battle rifle if you go by, like, weapon designation standards. Yeah, uh-huh. it's, a, it's a battle rifle. A battle rifle is technically a rifle that's in, like, a 30 caliber cartridge, and generally battle rifles are semi-automatic, though there are full-auto versions of battle rifles. The, the M16 would not be considered a battle rifle. The M16 would be considered assault ri- an assault rifle by military standards. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I thought it was bolt action or something. Nope. The M1 Garand is a semi-auto rifle. Uh, it was used in World War II. I think it was technically used in the Korean War, though I'm pretty sure the M14 was around by then. Mm-hmm. Um, it does give that really satisfying ping that I love so much. Yeah, it's basically an M1 Garand. Uh, I feel like they did a pretty good job modeling this gun in this game. Mm-hmm. It does feel like it might be a little too short if I'm going to be nitpicky. It does feel like it might be a little bit too short. And also the bolt is, when you're using it in first person, this area right down in here that's right in, just in front of the front sight, that area is like wrong. It shouldn't look exactly like that, but whatever. Feels like rainwater could get trapped in that pit. Yeah, it doesn't actually look like that in real life. It's much more flush. The brush gun! Brush gun is a weird name. It's called the brush gun because you're using it when you're walking through the brush. I would have guessed as much. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that the brush gun is based on a Marlin 336. I don't know if it's a bug or an oversight, but you can interrupt the lever animation by just tapping the trigger as fast as possible. (laughs) <laughs> and the gun just teleports down to the, the last point it was aiming on the screen. <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about the Marlin 336. I apologize for that. Um, it didn't get invited to your tea parties? Nah, I never invited it to my tea parties. But I find it kind of funny that it has like one of the like the super adjustable diopter rear sight. That's kind of neat. Those are actually things that existed like in, in Cowboy Times. And then they still left the rear sight on the barrel. So that's that's kind of fun. Oh, so it shoot, you see through three sights. Yeah, you're looking through three sights. Diopter sights are really good for target shooting, less good for hunting shooting. Well, like this kind of diopter rear sight, anyway. Hmm. So, cowboy repeater. This is the exact same thing. Lever action. No, this one is actually based on... Um, let me look at the outside of this gun. This one is based on the Winchester 1892 lever action rifle. When Columbus sailed the ocean blue. The Winchester 1892 was designed by, once again, John Moses Browning. Oh no. Go figure. Winchester wanted him to design like a new lever action rifle. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, we'll give you like six months to design this thing. We want it to be in this caliber, and we want it to hold, like, X amount of rounds, yada yada. Did they not have teams work on this? It's just one dude? I, back in the day, it was pretty much just, like, one guy would work on, like, new designs. Anyway, they told him, you know, you got, like, this amount of time to do it. John Browning designed this rifle from him having the first thought about it to having a functioning prototype was 30 days. 30 sounds like it would be pretty standard. No, it takes a long time to design a gun. I don't know. It doesn't seem impressive to me. Most guns, it probably takes upwards of a year. Well, what corners did he cut to make this? He didn't cut any corners. That's the thing. It works incredibly well. John Browning was just that good at designing weapons. I want you to appreciate what a prolific designer John Browning was. I know he made a lot of guns. Give me a numerical amount. 41 different firearms John Browning designed. Okay. A lot of those gun designs are ones that are still used today. This rifle... 
this rifle based on the Winchester 1892 hmm. is one that he designed that's still being used today. Okay. Most gun designers get maybe one. That's not even assuming that that gun will still be around in 20 years. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. They say he's good, so he makes a gun. So they adopt that gun because it's John Browning. That it, back back when he was designing guns, he wasn't exactly like the most well-known gun designer. This is now. People are like, yeah, John Browning designed the Colt 1911 was designed by John Browning, and here we are in the year 22 whatever. I can't remember what year it is. <laughs> Because it's an apocalypse and every day is exactly the same. But here we are, this far in the future, and we're still using 1911s. Mm -hmm. People are still using this cowboy gun that was designed by John Browning in 1892. Yeah, so he made a timeless gun. He did, He made a lot of timeless guns. The 50 caliber machine gun was designed by John Browning. Ah, all right. 50 BMG was designed by John Browning. I, that's impressive, sure. There's a gun company that's named after John Browning. Fun story about, I, I used to own one of these that was in 357 Magnum, which I think is the same caliber this one is in, to be completely honest. Uh -huh. um, I used to own one of these rifles in 357 Magnum, and I took it apart to, uh, to replace some of the springs on the inside of it. Because uh, I, I like to tinker with things. Yeah, so I'm I, aware. I took it apart because I wanted to figure out how it worked, and I wanted to smooth out a bunch of the parts. Mm -hmm. The one I had bought was from a not great company, so I kind of had to fix it after I bought it to make it function better. I took it apart, and then I couldn't figure out how to get back together, and it was basically 30 minutes of me going, God damn it, John Moses Browning, you <laughs> daft idiot! Why would you design the gun like this? And then somebody was like, why don't you just put an empty shell casing in there, and then that'll make it easier to put back together. I'm like, that's stupid! Why would you design a gun with a... Oh my god, it goes back together flawlessly as soon as you put an empty shell casing in here. How? John Moses Browning, you brilliant fucking genius. How does that work? Uh, basically, in order to put part of the bolt back together, the spring has to be compressed. And if you don't put an empty shell casing in there, you ha kind of have to have six hands because you have to jam a hand down in there to compress the spring and another hand to hold part of the spring down. Mm. But if you put an empty shell casing in the chamber and then just snap the bolt closed, it holds everything together and you don't have to worry about it anymore. I can see how that would be a problem on the battlefield. I need to get this gun working as fast as I can, but I don't have any empty shells. No! I, it's not It's not a repair you would do on the battlefield. It's a repair <laughs> you would do at home. Winchester 1892 is what is the cowboy gun in this game. Really good lever action. Works incredibly well. If you've never owned one or never fired one, try it. It's a lot of fun. It makes you feel like a cow Shooting lever actions makes you feel like a cowboy. It's so fun. If that's the sensation you want. You could just put spurs on in a cowboy hat. Yeah, but there's something about firing a lever action gun that just makes you feel like John Wayne. You're like, yeehaw, partner! You lead your last haw! Bam! Bam! <laughs> it's super fun. I love shooting them. It's great. All right. Fat Man! The Fat Man is, in principle, based off of the Davy Crockett recoilless rifle system, uh, which is a tactical nuclear weapon. Right. I think they're a terrible idea. <laughs> and apparently so did the U.S. military, because they actually put all this time and effort into researching and designing the Davy Crockett. And then they went, hmm, yeah, no, we probably don't. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to give the military credit for that one, because I'm pretty sure the only reason they stopped using the Davy Crockett was because of the limited test ban treaty. <laughs> yeah, okay. They would have kept on going if they could. Yeah, they would have kept going, except that we had signed an agreement with Russia that said we wouldn't test nuclear weapons above ground anymore. Davy, Davy, Davy Crockett, Crockett violated international treaties. <laughs> <laughs> it was a recoilless rifle that would fire an atomic bomb, and the maximum range was about a mile, <laughs> and you yeah. would still be inside the radiological radius. They're not called disposable so much, soldiers for nothing. So much like Davy Crockett, if you actually had to use a Davy Crockett in battle... You're probably gonna die. Mm hmm Yeah. Hunting rifle. I've talked about this one before. It's based on a Mauser short action, bolt action rifle. Pretty dang rusty. I actually kind of disappointed in myself that I just shot that because I think the thing will explode if I try to do it one more time. So mm. just for safety's sake, we won't shoot this one anymore. Um, this one kind of looks like it was made in someone's garage, if I'm being completely honest. Mm. Which it is a post-apocalypse, so that's more than likely. Yeah, it's still a step above a pipe gun. Yeah, I would rather have this than a pipe gun, I think. Lever-action shotgun is based on the Winchester 1897? No, Winchester 1887. 
Lever action shotguns based on the Winchester 1887 shotgun. Win Winchester 1997. No, Winchester 1897. Mm -hmm. No, 1887. <laughs> you, you, you did that on purpose. Winchester 1999. No, stop it. <laughs> Winchester 1887. Number, number, number. 97. 18. Winchester 1887. Okay. No, yeah, it's a lever action shotgun. Um, have I talked about how this is one of the only shotguns that you can that ha has its capacity listed in plus two? You may have mentioned that. Yeah. I, I don't remember if I did or didn't mention that, but its capacity is listed as plus two. Can you hold two in the barrel? There's the chamber, right there. Mm -hmm. Right under it, you can see where the shotgun shell is. Mm -hmm. You can fill the magazine tube. You can put one round in the chamber. And you can actually drop around on the loading gate and close the bolt oh. to the gun. Huh. So you have another shell that is just ready to be loaded. As soon as you fire it and open it, it's going to kick the, the shell that was out and load the one that was sitting in the loading gate ready to go. Neat. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird that this is one of the few guns that you can do that with. Yeah, how many other guns do you know that can do that? There's only a couple other ones. I can think of the Bene uh, some of the Benelli series of guns. You can actually, it's called ghost loading, where you can prep one round on the loading gate. Mm-hmm. And then you can put a round in the chamber, but there's not many guns that their capacity can be listed as plus two. If your M16A2 has two in the barrel, that's a problem. That's that's not good. On most semi-auto guns, you don't want them to have two rounds. You might need to take care of that. Yeah, that's something you might want to look into. Yes. You might want to see a gunsmith. <laughs> Light machine gun. Why is it so big? That's a saw. Wow, my face is way too close to that rear sight. You're actually very close. It is primarily based on the M249 saw with a little bit of, like, the M60 in mm. it. Uh, so it's actually really close to kind of both of them. The rear sight is similar to a saw. If an M60 and a 249 had a baby, that's what it looked like. You're, you're kind of not wrong, actually. <laughs> it's very close. The, the barrel, like, especially the heat shield right here, the way the bipod is attached to the barrel and not to the receiver of the gun... Uh, the muzzle device on it and the gas port that's down here. Those are all very reminiscent of the M60. But the rear sight, the way the feed tray cover looks, and the stock are all reminiscent of an M249. So it's it's kind of a combination of the two of them. That's somewhat accurate. Anyway. Does the charging handle jiggle like that normally? I suppose it would if you hadn't locked the charging handle into its spot on the receiver. <laughs> no, it wouldn't normally do that. The 249 and the M60 and the 240 Bravo. I can, actually, I can't really think of any light machine guns that have a reciprocating charging handle. Most of them don't. Mm -hmm. Most light machine guns do not have a reciprocating charging handle. Okay. The Marksman Carbine, I, we might, I might just have to go into... Oh, man, I'm so proud right now. Look at that gun you're holding. Oh. Guys, look how cool I look. I look at my cool gun. Um, the Marksman Carbine is... Basically, it's it's based on the AR-15. It has an ACOG on the back of it. Um, it's I know the name of the company that makes that rail system. Piccatilly. It's it's based on a Viltor rail system, I believe. Um, it's got a Magpul PRS stock on it. Oddly, the magazine is like one of the 7.62 magazines. And for some reason, the charging handle is sticking out of the bolt on the side of it, which is not at all how it would actually work. It's basically an AR-15 with an ACOG on it, though the ACOG looks a little weird. It's got this hood on the top that... The shark fin? My guess is, originally, they were planning on having that be a red dot. And then they realized they couldn't implement having both a red dot and a scope on it and being able <laughs> to switch immediately which one it was. Mm -hmm. So instead of redesigning the entire, entire model, they just went, just cover it up, make it black. <laughs> because if you outright removed it, it would be a weight difference. No, like in the game when they made the model for this. Oh. So there is actually an ACOG that has a red dot sight on I the top see. of it. Or I an see. iron sight. I actually own an ACOG that has an iron sight built in there. And then there's a front iron sight on it. <laughs> it's basically so you can use it at very close range. You have iron sights built onto your, your, your optic in case four times magnification is too much. Hey, dog, I heard you like sights. So you put a sight on your sights. So you're looking down your sight or you're looking down your sight. Yes. It's a little goofy. I found it kind of funny that they based this off of, like, the AR-15 or M-16 series of guns, but then they made it semi-auto. Uh, every rifle like that I've encountered is semi-auto. Yeah, the M-16 has a, like, burst fire, and that, that assault carbine is full auto. The, the civilian version of that gun is... Oh, yeah, that's true. 
Well, I guess it would make sense if it's the Marksman carbine. Yeah, it would make sense if it's semi-auto only. Yeah, because Marksman don't need to have full auto. You te I mean, technically, you don't really need full auto on a Marksman rifle. So, yeah, that would make sense. The minigun! It's, it's called the minigun, but the actual minigun is a little different from this. It seems like it's a heavy beast to lug around. I find it strange they made this gun in 5mm, um, because that is definitely like a 30 caliber barrel. A 30 cal? Yeah, it's a th the actual minigun is 762 millimeter. So 7.62 is 30 cal. Yeah. F what's 5.56? Five, five, that is a uh, 5.56. Five, five, uh, oh, caliber, it would be 223. 223 caliber? Yeah. 5.56 5. would be 223 caliber. What? Hold on. 50 cal. Yeah. 30 cal. Mm -hmm. And then 223 cal? Yeah. The M16 series of rifle hmm. that the military uses is a 22 caliber rifle. 22 caliber? Really? Yeah, it's 22 caliber. If you want to be exact about it, it is .223 caliber. But yeah, the M16 is a 22 caliber rifle. I've always hated how there are so many different calibers of weapon. I didn't really make the connection that each caliber has its own millimeter designation as well. Yeah, it just depends on how you want to designate it. The weird little thing at the bottom, that's where the ammo is, apparently? So I don't know what this thing on my back is. <laughs> just Maybe it's the backpack holster where you keep the rest of the ammo. The army did, for a very short period of time, experiment with making a man-portable version of a minigun. Because usually the minigun is mounted to, like, a helicopter or on a vehicle. Mm -hmm. The problem okay. is it fires so quickly that if this backpack I have on was filled with ammo, I would burn through it in about five seconds. Looking at it now, I think it serves more as a counterweight. You're holding a big gun, and that thing will keep your back straight. I guess, or it'll just collapse my entire back, and I'll fall onto the ground in a crippled heap. <laughs> yeah, well, we already know that the military doesn't care much for its soldiers' backs. I, I forget what the exact firing rate of the minigun is, but it costs about $80 a second to shoot one. Mm -hmm. Through legal loopholes... The minigun is not a machine gun. No. It has six barrels mm -hmm. and six different bolts. <laughs> so it's not a machine gun. It's just six guns taped together. It is six different guns that are all firing individually. So technically, you don't need a machine gun license to own a minigun. What do you need to own? Uh, you need a whole fuck ton of money because they cost <laughs> about $30,000. Fair. And also they cost $80 a second to shoot. Y y and you have to put them on a tripod, which costs about $700. I can see why they don't get used recreationally. And also you generally need about six car batteries to power one. <laughs> which, coming back to the thing that I was saying originally, that's why the military experimented with making a man portable one of these for a very short period of time. And also there's so much recoil on one of those that if you do fire one of these, what generally happens is this. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Oh, I'm out of ammo. Thank fucking God. Thank you for shooting me in the leg, by the way. Well, yeah, it's uncontrollable. That was the point I was trying to bring up. I had to fix one of these once. <laughs> once? Yeah? I was never told how to fix one of these because technically it's an aircraft weapon system. Uh -huh. it's, not a, it's not small arms. No, you don't say! Yeah. Oddly enough, a howitzer is considered small arms, but this isn't because this is an aircraft weapon system. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of SF guys asked me to fix one at one point, and... Uh, As a joke, he thinks he's so smart. Well, he knows how to fix weapons. Do you think he could fix this minigun that we got? <laughs> I, I don't know what's wrong with the timing on it. And I went, okay, so I took it apart, and much to my shame, couldn't figure out how to put it back together. Oh, no. So I had to bring it back to them in several boxes with it just completely disassembled, and I was like, I'm sorry, guys, I couldn't fix it. And uh. they went... Oh, whatever. We'll just send it to the airplane guys and just order a new one. It was worth a shot. The sawed-off shotgun is... I'm, I'm pretty sure they designed it from the movie Mad Max. Um, again, this is one that looks kind of like that somebody made it in a basement. Mm -hmm. Most sawed-off shotguns are going to look very similar to this. It's also been apparently set up so it just fires both barrels at once. Is that not normal? Uh, not usually. You can wire the triggers together so it... Is this thing firing slugs? What the? F huh. Oh, it's firing two bullets, all right. Apparently it's firing slugs. Good lord, that beanbag round did a number on that wall. Look at that. Yeah, 
Less than lethal round, right? Yeah, less lethal. Capable of denting brick by six inches. <laughs> Good God. Uh, I, I guess I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. it I don't think this would be fun to shoot. Not one-handed, no. It. No. Even two-handed, I don't think I would particularly enjoy it. No. Sawing off the barrel might be good in close quarters combat. Yeah, it would make it smaller and concealable, but having it fire both barrels at the same time when the barrels are like six inches long and uh, you're holding it with one hand, I don't think that would be particularly enjoyable. Nah, nah. 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 The service rifle! This is definitely based on an M16A1. Looks like it, yep. It's got like the triangular hand guards, it's got the full stock, we got the, you know, little ring rear sight. I do find it kind of funny that they made them out of wood. Yeah, not got my favorite little... of the M16s. Yeah, the M16A1 isn't bad. Uh, for its time, it was great, I'm sure. Oh yeah, it was revolutionary. Uh, the Silence 22 pistol is based off of a Ruger Mark III, I think. Ooh, a Luger. No, Ruger, not a Luger. What's the difference between a Ruger and a Luger? Uh, Ruger is a gun company. Luger is the type of handgun. Made by Ruger? No. Oh. So you're never going to find a Ruger's Luger? No. The Ruger Mark III is a 22 series of handguns. This one is integrally suppressed, which is a real thing that exists. When you say suppressed, it's not exactly a silent weapon. You fire it in a room, people are going to hear you do it. People are going to hear you do it, but 22 is one of the few cartridges that you can feasibly make movie quiet. Yeah, if there's going to be any caliber you can suppress, it would be the small one. There are several things you would have to do. You would have to convert it so the bolt doesn't move. It requires a decent amount of work, but you can actually make them, like, so quiet that you wouldn't be able to hear one fire in the next room. Mm-hmm. Surprised they're not used more often in actual assassinations. Probably because people that use them successfully aren't discovered that they were using them. <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah. We got the Silence 22 submachine gun. I think I've talked about this one before. Wiggle wiggle, yeah. It's a 22 caliber submachine gun. The, the, the concept behind it was basically, you get enough 22 flying through the air, hitting the same point over and over, you're just going to brute force your way through any body <laughs> armor that you're shooting at. Mm -hmm. And it does work. You do have to get a lot of rounds onto something, but because it's 22, there's virtually no recoil. It's basically a sewing machine. That's that's a terrible analogy. I mean, it's, it, it sounds like a it sounds like a sewing machine when you shoot one of these. It's just it's mm -hmm. just it just goes. Um, but if it's only twenty two, it's probably not great for penetration. No, but I mean, the concept is basically if somebody's wearing body armor, one twenty two bullet isn't going to go through. No, two twenty two bullets might not go through. Ah, but but when you fire thirty twenty two bullets and they all hit basically the same spot, eventually there's it's going to be like punching the same spot over and over again. Right, because if body armor gets shot once, you have to get new body armor. The concept works in practice, and it's great for taking out a lot of people silently. Yeah. Interestingly, this gun is actually completely ambidextrous. It ejects the shell casings out the bottom of the gun. Aha! Oh, it actually shows that in the game. Oh, those 22 shells are way too big. And, and it's like it's like ejecting 5.56 five, shells. What the <laughs> hell? I'd never noticed that before. Those are big ass shells, huh? Those are big 22 shells. 22 shells are not the size of my entire pinky finger. <laughs> I don't, I don't entirely know what the sniper rifle is supposed to be based off of. The scope that it's on, that's on it is definitely based off of a British combat optic. Mm-hmm. But as for the rest of it, I don't entirely know what it's based off of. Interestingly, I did just notice that this thing that looks like the foregrip is actually a bipod that looks like it's supposed to fold down. Mm. That's kind of funny. Never noticed that before. Yeah, I think that's supposed to be like a bipod for it. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what this is supposed to be based off of. I think it's just supposed to look like future science fiction rifle. Well, it achieves that. Yeah. The Varmint Rifle. Oddly, when you fire this gun, the animation in third person makes it look like it's a straight pull. Maybe it is. I don't... Actually, I have no idea this could be a straight pull bolt action. What do you mean straight pull? Um, so there's different types of bolt actions. Um, the bolt action that you're probably thinking of is... You lift up the lever, and then you, you pull yeah, it back. Yeah, you lift up, pull backwards, push forwards, push down. Yes. That's what most bolt action rifles are. Mm -hmm. The reason for lifting up on the lever is that you are rotating and unlocking the bolt from the receiver. Makes sense. Straight pull bolt actions are you grab the bolt handle, pull it straight back, push it straight forward. That's all you have to do. Mm -hmm. But Th that one's not a straight pull. This one, I mean, it might be. 
Oh, uh, from this angle it isn't. From the third person angle it looks like it's a straight pull. Does it? The 9mm submachine gun! That looks like crap. It's actually very close to the real one. It's the uh, M3 grease gun. Oh, uh, yes. I find it funny that there's a stock on this, but I refuse to use it. <laughs> it's not a very big stock, though. What is this, a stock for ants? Like, it's collapsed right now. I don't know why I refuse to bring the stock. Oh, the stock is welded in place. Okay, the ATF got to this gun and they insisted it was a pistol. <laughs> oh, that is actually interesting. Mm -hmm. This lever right here on the side... That is indicative that this is a first-generation grease gun. Ooh. That is the cocking lever. Um, it basically is connected to a linkage on the inside so that when you load the gun, you pull that lever backwards, and that's what pulls the bolt backwards. Mm-hmm. That increased the cost of manufacturing this gun. Okay. So they very quickly got rid of that and just drilled a hole into the side of the bolt that you <laughs> shove your finger in there and pull the bolt backwards. Wow. So... I find it interesting that when you first equip this gun, the bolt is actually all the way forward, mm -hmm. which means that there is nothing chambered in it, because this is an open bolt submachine gun. Okay. Basically, when this gun fires, the bolt has to move forward, it picks up a shell casing, chambers it, and then fires it immediately. So it's interesting to me that when you equip this weapon, the bolt is all the way forward, and then when I reload it... Now the bolt is locked to the rear, and the little hand, the little lever is backwards. What? And that's how it should be normally when it's ready to fire. So, the first time you equip it, it's incorrectly got a door it's, open? The bolt is incorrectly all the way forward, and somehow it's ready to fire. But it was firing with a closed mode earlier, but that's not how the gun works? No, that is definitely not how the gun works. <laughs> how, how can you fire a bullet out of a gun if the chamber's open? So you can see the bolt right there. You see just the edge of it. Yes. When you fire it, that's going to move forwards. It's going to pick up a round from the magazine, put the round into the barrel, and then it's going to fire it the moment it's closed. Well, uh, uh, okay, looking at this gun with what you just said, it seems like the magazine should be further back. Yeah, these don't have a very long barrel. The reason this gun is so long and the magazine is so far forward is because you have a very heavy bolt, and then you also have a... Big ol' frickin' bed spring that's keep that's <laughs> compressed back here, and that's what pushes the bolt forwards. Mm. Very um, primitive system by today's standards. It's it's incredibly primitive, but the advantage of having a just a straight blowback gun is that it's cheap, and it's very easy to manufacture. This gun definitely does look cheap. The grease gun was basically manufactured out of a piece of tube stock and folded steel. It wouldn't have surprised me if you told me. That this gun was originally made from old cans of grease. The reason it's called a grease gun is because of its similarity to a gun that dispenses grease. Yeah. That you use for lubricating things. Or a cock gun. Its actual designation is submachine gun 45 caliber. Nah. Which, this one is in 9 mil. <laughs> oh, so there's the occasional tracer I see. Yeah. Not all of them are tracers. No, not all of them. Just occasionally you see one just zip out of there. Half of them seem to have tracers. It's, it, to me, it feels like it's random. Oh, look at that! You can actually see the bullets! <laughs> oh, that's so cool! They actually did that! Nobody's gonna see it normally, but... Yeah, you'll never see that normally, but that's really interesting. You can actually see the inside of the barrel in there. If I remember correctly, the M3 grease gun is a double-feed magazine, which is wrong for what's in the image there, but it's fine. Because, I mean, who the hell is actually gonna do this? <laughs> Pew 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 pew. I'm just having fun now. You have a newfound appreciation for this gun. I they did a really good job modeling this one. I'm I am pleasantly surprised with how well they modeled this. I do find it funny. Oh, it's disappeared. Credit where it's due. They did a very good job modeling this gun. I love that they actually put the little sling swivels on it too. This thing right here on the back and that thing right there on the front, those little loops, oh. those are actually the sling swivels for this gun. If you had a sling. I also love that in the first person reloading animation, you shove your finger into the port and pull it backwards. Oh, yeah. Do you actually do that thing? Yeah, see, look. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's no charging handle on that side. 
Yep. You just put your finger in the freaking chamber hole. You just put your finger into the chamber, grab onto the little hole that's in there, and just rip that thing backwards. Just diddle the bolt and off yep. you go. Off you go. I am... I, wow, I have actually discovered more about this gun. I've played this game for this long, and I learned a bunch about this gun that I didn't know was in this game. Just take a moment to examine it and wow, appreciate it. I, I can really appreciate the work they put into that. And tomorrow, I'm going to do a rant about all the game's energy weapons. Ooh, okay. I don't know anything about them, but it's not going to stop me. I mean, I don't know anything about them either, so it'll all be new to me. We can bathe in the ignorance together. Yay! Bathe in the ignorance. Bathe in the waters of life. Bathe in the ignorance of life. <laughs> How do pulse slugs work, Zach? I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe like taser shotgun shells. Hey! Those are actually a thing. Really? There's taser shotgun shells. You know how tasers, normally you, when you fire the taser, the little bards come out and they stick into something? Yes. A taser shotgun shell is basically that entire thing contained inside a shotgun shell. Oh, uh, neat. So it's a less lethal shotgun shell that just has a bunch of taser barbs sticking out of the end of it. Sure, we'll assume that's it. Yeah.